gentlemen, welcome to the installation of John J. Spraga, third president of Bristol Community College. John Almeida, chair of the board of trustees presiding. Will the audience rise for the academic procession and remain standing until the completion of the national anthem?
declared the installation of Dr. John J. Sprague as third president of Bristol Community College now open. Please remain standing. The Reverend Nicholas P. Smith, pastor of the Sprague family's former parish and longtime family friend, will give the invocation, immediately followed by the national anthem sung by Sarah Garrett of Baltimore City Community College, where she is a dean and former colleague of Dr. Sprague's at Anne Arundel Community College in Maryland. Thank you. I invite you to put yourself in the presence of God as you know God best in your own heart. God of all creation, late March every year is the time in New England when you call nature itself to blossom, to burst forth with new energy and color and life. This March 19th, respected and esteemed Bristol Community College asks your blessing on its version of springtime that officially commences today with the inauguration of a new president, Dr. John Sprager. Bless the institution itself. May it grow in its own sense of community, of the many becoming one, of the sense of belonging and family between faculty and students, of reaching out to one another in care and friendship and support. Bless those who come here to learn. May their years here be an adventure of the mind, not just open to information, but appreciation to the truth that education is really about growing in maturity and responsibility and wholeness and making their world a better place because of it. Bless this good and gifted man, President John Sprager. May he be the very personification of the wisdom crucial to leadership, a beacon of light in time of darkness, a calming presence in time of stress, an encouraging but authoritative voice in times of particular challenge and change. Gracious God, this is a day of transition, new beginnings. Bring reality and fruition to our dreams and hopes for the new president, for the college, for ourselves. Amen.
please be seated. Wow. Dr. Sprague, my fellow trustees, members of the platform party, institutional delegates, college faculty and staff, and honored guests. On behalf of Bristol Community College, welcome. We are so pleased that you have gathered with us to remember, to celebrate, and to imagine all that Bristol Community College has been, is, and will be. As Bristol is in its 35th year of service, it is worth noting that today we celebrate the installation of what is the college's only third president. Our stable past bodes well for our future. And today, this ceremony symbolizes our commitment to serve our community with access to education and opportunity now and in the future. At this time, I would like to introduce some of the platform party. Those who will speak will be introduced later on in the program. First, serving as the faculty marshals are Jules Reikabush, professor of English and communications, who represents the senior faculty, and Phoebe Blackburn, instructor in business administration, who represents the junior faculty. Next, I proudly present the members of the Bristol Community College Board of Trustees. These community leaders are volunteers appointed by the governor. They devote their time and energies to the governance of this institution. Last year, they committed a great deal of that time to the task of searching for a new president. My fellow trustees, please rise as I introduce you. Mr. Richard Wilson, Vice Chairman of the Board. Mr. Stephen Karam, Secretary of the Board. Deneen Ellitson, Student Trustee. Mr. Robert Bogan. Mr. Carl Cruz, Class of 1969. Dr. David Greer. Sister Kathleen Harrington, Miss Joanne Souza, class of 1979, and Attorney Jay Clarkin. on a platform, I would like to have stand Mrs. Ann Hudnall, the widow of Bristol Community College's first president, President Emeritus Jack Hudnall. I would also ask that President Emerita Eileen Farley the second president of Bristol Community College, please rise. I would like to acknowledge a number of guests who are with us today. The Honorable Bonnie Frank, Congressman representing the 4th District of the House of Representatives. Patrick Norton, representing Car Congressman James McGovern of the 3rd District. The Honorable Cheryl Jakes, State Senator of Massachusetts. The
the mayor of the city of Fall River, the Honorable Edward Lambert. And also in our audience, Dr. David Pierce, who is the retired president of the American Association of Community Colleges, who spoke this morning as part of the college's professional day conference. Dr. Pierce. It is now my honor to introduce you to the Chancellor of the Board of Higher Education, Dr. Judith I. Gill, who will bring us greetings on behalf of the Commonwealth and the Board. President Sprega, members of the Bristol Community College Board of Trustees, President Emeritus Eileen Farley, distinguished members of the platform party, alumni, faculty, staff, students, family, and friends. On this auspicious occasion, it is my great pleasure to bring greetings from Governor Salucci, Lieutenant Governor Swift, and the Massachusetts Board of Higher Education. I am honored to be part of the inauguration of Dr. Jack Sprega as Bristol Community College's third president. President Sprager and I have followed similar paths. We were born in Massachusetts and left the Commonwealth to gain the breadth of experience that would one day have others asking us to return. We know the fulfillment of coming home to assume important and challenging positions in higher education. And today, we are partners engaged in the important task of building an accessible, quality system of public higher education in our home state. One of my first responsibilities as chancellor was to recommend to the Board of Higher Education, and I did so with great enthusiasm, that the members approve the unanimous decision of the Bristol Community College Board of Trustees to appoint Dr. Sprager as the new president of this excellent college. During this year, we have worked together on many projects. President Sprager has assumed a strong leadership role for the college in the community and in the Commonwealth. For those who have known him for many years, this comes as no surprise, for President Sprager's commitment to the mission of community colleges is genuine, and his leadership abilities appear limitless. I now ask you, President Sobrega, to continue to assist me with the important task of building a nationally renowned system of public higher education. I ask your help in developing a system in which our public campuses collaborate and cooperate to provide exciting, high quality, and innovative programs that will promote good citizenship and a stronger economy, and will provide to our students the education they deserve. Again, I thank the Board of Trustees and the Inaugural Committee for asking me to participate in this happy celebration. President Sprager, you have my very best wishes, and I look forward to working with you for many years. Congratulations, and enjoy this very special day. Gill. I am pleased to present Dr. David Hotlip, President of Northern Essex, Northern Essex Community College and currently serving as President of the Massachusetts Community College Council of Presidents, who will bring greetings on behalf of our sister institutions. Dr. Hotlip. On behalf of the President's Council of the Massachusetts Community Colleges, it is both my honor and privilege to not only be here, but to warmly congratulate John J. Sprague for his position as the third president of Bristol Community College. Jack has quickly become an active member of the President's Council. He has been a pleasure to work with, and he has been someone that I've truly enjoyed getting to know. He has already distinguished himself and proven to be a valuable contributor, collaborator, collaborator, and a great asset to the Council. From the short time that I have known him, it is clear that 
Jack is perfectly suited to lead Bristol Community College as it remembers, celebrates, and imagines. He is equally qualified to be a participant in addressing the challenges of the Massachusetts system of community college and to helping to shape its future. For all the presence in the system, I say to Jack, congratulations, welcome, and best wishes for a bright and very successful future. You have the full support of the council, and we look forward to many exciting and productive years together. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Hartlett. An important piece of Bristol Community College's mission is to support and encourage workforce development in the community. To bring greetings on behalf of the community, it is my pleasure to introduce Mr. Joel Burns, Director of Human Resources at the New Bedford Standard Times. Mr. Burns is a former trustee of the college. In his current role, he was instrumental in creating the New Bedford Workplace Literacy Collaborative, where BCC worked with New Bedford businesses to provide basic adult learning services to their employees. Mr. Burns. Thank you. On behalf of the community, I'd like to welcome Jack here. Bristol Community College has been a beacon of hope for this community for many years. Yet today, the challenge is greater than ever. The educational requirements of the workforce have been elevated to an all-time high. The need for this college has escalated. You've become a powerful force in the transition from school to the world of work. The competition for good workers is intense, and we have to compete on a global level. In spite of these challenges, we've let artificial boundaries hinder our progress. The college needs to intensify its efforts to be this catalyst for change. This change needs to affect the entire South Coast, not just its core. Education itself needs to evolve to the 21st century. The methods of yesterday are no longer as effective as they once were. The challenge today is to find a method to interest and educate all our stakeholders. The barriers to progress are numerous. Fear of the unknown, vested interests, tunnel vision to name a few. Somehow we need to rise above our own personal interests and do what is best for our community and this college can make it happen. Dr. Sprague, we ask you to take us to the next level challenge the system to do what's right, not what is expedient or expected. You stand in the threshold of a new horizon with the opportunity to do great things. Seize the moment. Make it happen. Years from now, when we look back, we'll be able to say that this was the final hour. You helped us turn the corner. You took us to where we ought to be. I pledge our support to you from the community the middle name in this college, the most important customer you have is this community. Rise us up. We're not sparrows, we're eagles. Help us to fly where we ought to be. Good luck to you, Jack. Thank you very much, Joel. It is my distinct privilege to introduce Mr. Fred Sullivan, Executive Vice President of First Fed Savings Bank and President of the Bristol Community College Foundation. Fred. I had the opportunity to serve on the search and screen committee to find the right person to serve as the third president of Bristol Community College. 
During his first interview, I remember being particularly taken by Jack's enthusiasm and his commitment to the community college mission. I felt then, and I'm sure now, that Jack was the best fit for this new era of the college. As he takes the helm, I know he has the right stuff to lead Bristol Community College into its 35th year and beyond. The Bristol Community College Foundation has also hit a milestone, providing 20 years of support for the college. Thanks to the efforts of many, including the generous support of alumni, employees of the college, area businesses, and committed individuals throughout our communities, the BCC Foundation has established a solid base. Our challenge to you, Jack, is threefold. To provide access to excellence in education for all students, to make the college a resource for the entire community, and to promote the reputation of Bristol Community College as one of the leading community colleges in the state and in the country. We, the members of the BCC Foundation Board of Directors, pledge to work with you to help the college reach new heights. If you can imbue all of us with the same enthusiasm that you have shown, I know together we can overcome any obstacles. On behalf of the directors of the foundation, I'd like to present you with this silver pin which commemorates your inauguration. Best of luck, Jack. to look at the uh, beautifully designed program for today's event, you might have noticed that alongside my name was a number. Uh, I'm very proud to say that I, too, am a graduate of Bristol Community College. As an, alum an alumnus I, of Bristol Community College, I am particularly pleased to introduce Mr. Arthur Paul, Vice President of Marketing for Bridgewater Credit Union and President of the Bristol Community College Alumni Association. He brings a charge and a gift on behalf of my fellow alumni. Arthur. Dr. Sprager. On behalf of the more than 20,000 alumni of Bristol Community College, it is my pleasure to welcome you to our community. We are enthusiastic about those things you value, about your emphasis on student success, and your commitment to the power of the community college. As you already know, more than 90% of the students who have attended Bristol live within 30 miles of this campus. This gives you a great opportunity to actually experience the quality this institution offers. You are likely to find that your dental hygienist, your local store manager, your accountant, and your banker, and all sorts of other professionals you have met and will meet all started at Bristol Community College. This uncommon integration into the community demonstrates how important our college is, not just to those who attend here, but also to the community. As BCC maintains its reputation for excellence and quality, you enhance the value of the degrees we earned. It is in the interest of all of us that this fine institution continues to grow strong and remain influential in this region. And so, Dr. Sprager, we charge you, make this
this college strong. Build it, nurture it, make it grow. To help you remember our call to you, we offer you this brick. symbolize for you the essence of the strong education we received and our challenge that you continue to build on the strong foundation of our community college. We pledge to you our support as you lead this institution onto even greater things. Congratulations, Dr. Springer. It's now my pleasure to introduce Mr. Daniel Sprager, son of Jack's, who brings greetings on behalf of the family. Dan? Thank you very much. Writers, I never had to look for that for a hero. 
my hero was always right down the hall. Thank you. was emotional. <laughs> Maybe a song would be good right about now. <laughs> good luck to me. <laughs> <laughs> it is my great honor to introduce Bill Spraga, Jack's brother. Oh. He will now perform his composed song, Begun, if Thank you will. You, folks. Uh, when Jack asked me uh, to compose a song for the inaugural, I really uh, didn't didn't know where to begin. Welcome to the inaugural. Uh, it didn't cut it, but uh, I didn't know where to begin. But Jack said, well, just think. Just think of this, Bill. Just try to come up with a rhyme for magnificent. Well, what rhymes with magnificent? I couldn't think of a rhyme for magnificent, but I, I came up with this instead. So. Back in the block, remember mother saying, if ifs were horses, we could all go for a ride. You rode a stride. First among the things our father taught us, my son, you can do anything you want to do. You proved it true. And no, oh, oh, how the climb seemed to go on forever.
Thank you, Bill. I see a lot of Jack and Bill, don't you? <laughs> One of several reoccurring themes that embody our new president's life and work is student success. In that light, it is my pleasure to introduce Ms. June Reedy, president of our student senate. Ms. Reedy is a member of the class of 2001 and will receive her degree in criminal justice this June. She was selected by student representatives to bring a charge and a presentation to the new president on behalf of the student body. Ms. Reedy. theme of Dr. 
Dr. Sprague is, is his belief that all who work for the college play an important role in the learning process as colleagues in learning. We are very proud of all who work for the college. In recognition of their roles in the mission of this institution, college employees were asked to nominate a representative to speak on their behalf, and the next four speakers were chosen. First, I have the pleasure to introduce Mr. Michael Sandell, whose official position is Maintainer One. Mr. Sandell brings a charge in a presentation on behalf of the classified staff, which includes support personnel, security, groundskeepers, and maintenance staff. Mr. Sandell. with me, I'll get through this. I first of all like to thank all those who are in the inauguration committee for selecting me to represent our classified staff. I really do consider this an honor and a privilege to be here on this very special occasion. Uh, to our honored guest, President Sprague, on behalf of myself and classified staff whom I represent, we welcome you and we extend to you warm greetings to you and we congratulate you being appointed as president of our college. At this time, I would like to present the gift from our classified staff. This is a very beautiful box. Uh, this box represents the very talent and skills that our other classified staff, or which the classified staff bring to this college in achieving our common goal here at this community college. And here, inside, is your symbol Office. I'd like to just take a brief moment just to uh, use an analogy that was that was made by the Apostle Paul in the Bible over in 1 Corinthians chapter 12, where Paul writes a letter to the church describing the church as the human body. And I would like to use the same analogy to, as of the human body to describe Bristol Community College. President Sprague, as you know, the human body is not made up of one member, but many members. And like many members having many different functions. And although it's many members having many functions, it's still one body. We here at Bristol Community College are also many members having many different functions and responsibilities, but yet we're still one college. And just like the ears will not say to the eyes, I don't have need of you, and the hands will not say to the fingers, I do not have need of you, neither can we here at Christian Community College say to each other, we have no need of each other. For we all join together as one college, functioning together as one. And you, President Sobrega, have been chosen to be the head of this body, if you will. And it is up to you to keep this body together, to bring it together so that we can function as one unit. And I would uh, encourage you to always remember the importance that we all play here, this, the role that we all play here. If I was to choose a body to represent the classified staff, I would choose the feet. Now, I understand that the feet is not a very attractive part of the body, but I want you to understand that but the feet does play a very important part because the feet provides three things. Number one, it supports the body. Number two, it provides balance. And number three, it carries the body to where it needs to go. Now, if you can imagine yourself, President Sobrega, sitting there having no feet. <laughs> how would you be... How would you be able to stand up having no feet to support you? And how would you provide balance if you have no feet to help you? And how would you get to the reception banquet if you have no feet to, to that place? 
I say all this just to remind you that we of the classified staff are just as important here as well. And we play a very vital role. And Prince Sprigg, I ask you that you would always acknowledge the importance that we play here and to always recognize and to appreciate our efforts here at PCC and to always provide your full support as one body and one unit. I thank you. memorized all that. <laughs> Next, I am pleased to introduce Ms. Ruth, Ms. Ruth Sullivan, the Associate Director of the Learning Resources Center, who represents the professional staff. This group of employees includes librarians, counselors, and academic support personnel. Ms. Sullivan brings a charge and a presentation on their behalf. Ms. Sullivan. Greetings from the librarians, counselors, tutors, lab coordinator, and unit professional staff members. Dr. Sprague, as we have gotten to know you and your values over the past few months, we have particularly appreciated your students first approach. As educators ourselves who participate in the learning process both in and out of the classroom, we as the professional staff understand that the rich learning experiences our students need and deserve require the participation of many players. And we know that you, too, believe this. So this is our charge to you. Continue to support our work, not only with the resources we need to ensure excellent learning experiences for our students, but also with your recognition of our vital partnership with the classroom faculty. It's our work together that enables the college to foster the educated person. As symbols of this charge we give you today, I have two gifts, tools for success professional staff style. First, I present you with this special library card. <laughs> this is the pass key with which you can open the door to a vast world of information. It will allow you to have books, magazines, videos, CDs, and more sent to you from distant locations. And it will give you information instantly from all points of the globe. There's a bonus with this card as well. Over 65 collective years of expertise from our dedicated BCC reference staff. We also have a handy pocket version of this for, that you may find a bit more convenient for daily use. You have already established yourself as a student-oriented educator and leader, keeping in touch with students as they grapple with the intricacies of research, study skills, testing, and life planning is rich and rewarding work, made even better by the outpouring of gratitude that we receive from the students themselves. We invite you, as your schedule allows, to join professional staff as we work one-on-one -on -one with students in advising tutoring, or reading. For those times when you join us, I present you with this nameplate for your workstation. Thank you, Ms. Sullivan. We are especially proud of our outstanding faculty and the deliberate and measured efforts to challenge students and call them to success in the classroom and in life. I am pleased to introduce Dr. David War, President of Chemistry. 
Dr. War served on the Presidential Search and Screen Committee and brings a charge and presentation on behalf of his fellow professors. Dr. War. First of all, this is, a, a, I think, a, a very fun and inspiring day, and it, and it really pleases me to hear from the various segments of the college community uh, and, and uh, for you folks to see the, the richness of this institution, and I, and I feel very wonderful about it. Um, let me begin by uh, welcome, welcoming President Sprager, invited guests, faculty, staff, students, and members of the greater, greater college community. Um, I'd like to first of all um, give my uh, gift to, to Jack. Uh, it's not particularly exciting, in, but it, yet it's somewhat reflective of me, I guess. Uh, I, I do have uh, Jinx Winstanley to, to thank for finding uh, this appropriate tie. Uh, it, it has uh, references to professors and teachers and all kinds of educational things on it. And this, we hope that you'll wear this, Jack, uh, to remind you uh, of the uh, commitment that you have to uh, faculty. So I'll, I'll just leave that here. Uh, it's, it's really, for me, a very great honor to have been chosen by my peers to bring greetings from the faculty of Bristol Community College on the occasion of the inauguration of Jack Sprager as our uh, third president. I consider this honor a culmination of the efforts that I and others expended during the previous academic year searching for a new president. As the only holdover from the committee that 23 years ago was involved in the decision to invite Eileen Farley to Fall River, it was again an interesting experience. I can't help but take note that it took Eileen quite a while uh, before she finally decided to take leave of us. I, I don't know whether Jack will be able to stand it that long, but um, I, I probably won't be here. As is always the case, there were many somewhat conflicting, but not mutually exclusive ideas as to what and ultimately whom we would want to lead our institution in its next phase of development. I saw then and continue to recognize the need to establish a level of respect for the faculty of this college that will enable us, all of us, to work together toward realistic goals, which we can support not only because they are worthy, but because we have participated in their development and in their implementation. We recognize that the community colleges are in the best position to respond to the changing needs of the communities that we serve. Respond we must and we have. We will be remiss, however, if, with your guidance, we do not establish ourselves as leaders in the greater community that depends upon us. I've often chided my colleagues that we as, as faculty have become, in some respects, like independent vendors, hawking our wares to the exclusion of efforts at cooperation and collaboration. Perhaps this has been of necessity. Your task is to call on all the strengths that this fine faculty has to offer and to make us partners in a greater sense. I wish that I could offer some humble words of apology when I say that this college, like most others, is as strong as its faculty. But I hold this view with too much passion to do so. I maintain with great conviction that we can and do make a difference, and like most members of a family, need to be nurtured. That task must fall on your shoulders. We welcome you to our community and challenge you to help us to make Bristol Community College an even better place within which to learn and to grow. Thank you for your kind attention. introduce Mr. Gerald LePage, the Assistant Dean of Mathematics, Science and Engineering. 
Mr. LePage has the distinction of having served in all employee categories. And brings a charge and presentation on behalf of the management personnel at Bristol Community College. Mr. LePage. This is an emotional moment for me too, Daniel. I hope I can hold it together. It's an honor for me to have been selected to um, speak on behalf of the administration at this college on such a special day. I welcome you, John Sprager, to what I consider to be my second home. Since 1974, the year that you began your uh, community college career, I have spent many long hours working with hundreds of other people trying to make this a better place in which students may learn. And I have done so in many capacities, as classified staff, professional staff, faculty, and now administration. And in each of those capacities, I have witnessed and sometimes experienced misunderstandings of what the other groups do and what part they take in providing students with a proper learning environment. The group gathered here before you today, Jack, is my BCC family. How am I doing so far, Daniel? <laughs> and like most families, they do have their misunderstandings and disagreements. Somewhere along the way, I think we've lost a little bit of that familial spirit. And in that light, our challenge to you follows. We challenge you, John, and everyone listening, to do all that is in your power to renew that feeling of family, of cooperation, and of understanding to the BCC community and truly make us colleagues in learning. I believe you're off to a fine start, Jack. Now, I have two gifts for you. Uh, by the way, the gifts are contained in a 100 years after the crime conference on the Lizzie Borden case. No. No reflection on your administration. <laughs> so that you are not outdone by Dr. Pierce, we have also for you a first day issue of the stamp commemorating 100 years of community colleges. It represents your commitment to that institution the best place on earth in which all citizens can learn. Now all of you know me, so on the lighter side, we have for you a toolbox containing some tools for victory, which you may use to meet all the challenges placed before you today. I won't put them all out here. You can look at them at your leisure. But contained within are an hourglass with which, you, with which you can mark the time it will take you to meet the challenges. A roll of red tape and a pair of administrative scissors to cut through it. <laughs> and a lion, a scarecrow, and a tin man. those challenges with courage, wisdom, and compassion. Rest assured, Jack, you're not in Kansas anymore. <laughs> Starting to look a little like Building 19 up here.
I would like to thank all of you who made these presentations for your moving and thoughtful challenges. The members of the Board of Trustees applaud you and pledge all we can to enable our new president to meet these challenges. Today, we formally install the third president in Bristol Community College's history. Chartered in December 1965 by the Commonwealth of Massachusetts, community colleges were at that time a relatively new idea in Massachusetts. In Bristol's 35-year history, the college has grown in stature and influence and has become a vital part of our community. This is due in no small measure to the leadership of the college's first two presidents. Jack P. Hudnall, the founding president, came to Fall River where there were no classrooms, no faculty, nothing but his dream to forge a new community college. Mr. Hudnall served for, from 1966 to 1978. Eileen Farley was then named the second president of Bristol Community College, and during her service from 1978 to 2000, she formed the mature institution you are witness to today. I invite Ann Hudnall, who represents her husband, and Eileen Farley to stand so that we may acknowledge the role each played in building our future. Today, a new member formally joins this distinguished group of presidents. I now call on Dr. Sprager to step forward. <clears throat> to assist in this installation, I invite fellow trustee Dr. David Greer, chair of the Presidential Search and Screen Committee, to assist me at the podium. My fellow trustees, would you please stand? Trustees of Bristol Community College, do you affirm in the presence of these witnesses the choice of Dr. John J. Sprager as the third president of Bristol Community College? They do, Jack. <laughs> Dr. Sprager, the Board of Trustees has declared that you are its choice to lead Bristol Community College as its third president. To you comes the great privilege and awesome responsibility of leading Bristol into its next era and fulfilling the promise made daily to its students, to its alumni, to its faculty and staff, and to its community that we will be the community's college and foster hope, nurture opportunity, and enable the dreams of all within our region. By virtue of the authority of the Bristol Community College Board of Trustees, we place on your shoulders the seal of the college the symbol of the high office that you now hold. Ladies and gentlemen, I am proud to present to you the third president of Bristol Community College, Dr. John Sprager.
Chairman Almeida, members of the Board of Trustees of Bristol Community College, colleagues in education, honored guests, family, and friends. With a deep sense of humility, a profound respect for this magnificent institution, especially its extraordinary community of colleagues in learning, and inspired by the great academic chain of being that's been forged throughout the ages, I humbly and eagerly accept the presidency of Bristol Community College. With unqualified commitment and boundless enthusiasm, I dedicate myself to this college and to this community. Remember, celebrate, imagine. What a wonderful theme for this occasion. On a personal level, there are many people who contributed their time and talent and, yes, even treasure to enhance my personal and professional development. Without them, I would not be standing here today. Many are here today. Some are no longer with us. I have a dear friend who always insists the first should be first. To that end, let me begin by recognizing publicly my immense debt to my loving wife of over 26 years, Joanne, and our two children, Dan and Christy Ann. I draw on their endless support and love. They have memories of Monticello and Mr. Jefferson's beautiful University of Virginia, while I recall pouring through the historical collections in the UVA archives. They have seen the cadets on the parade ground at VMI while I was researching the papers of General George Marshall. I'm not certain what they did to remain occupied in beautiful downtown Hyde Park, New York, because I was inside the Franklin D. Roosevelt Library happily devouring reels of microfilm and microfiche. And those were just the more exotic of the many places that my research needs took us. I today hope that they share my view that it was all worthwhile. I remember, too, my late parents. It was they and their examples of unconditional love, sterling character, sense of integrity, work ethic, and common sense perspectives that prepared me for a life that has been filled with wide-ranging challenges. With all this pomp and circumstance, I can just hear my Irish mother saying, what kind of a fashog is this now? <laughs> but I know they are both enjoying this great occasion. The empty chairs on the platform are for them. already met my brother Bill, and wasn't that a wonderful uh, song and processional? Please allow me to acknowledge my other brother, Dennis the lawyer. <laughs> and Joanne's parents and all of our family members, all have been inexhaustible sources of support for me. Thank you very much. I hope that you will indulge me a hurried mention of a few other towering influences in my life. There are, of course, too many to cite here, but I must pay tribute to some. The late Professor Jules Davids, my Georgetown mentor. Roger Rutley and the late Richard Applehands, Air Force instructor pilots who taught me the meaning of professionalism and to never be satisfied with anything less than excellence. Dr. Freddie Nicholas, Professor Wayne Knight, and the late Dr. Josephine Holcomb at J. Sergeant Reynolds Community College the late President George Pass at Tidewater Community College, Edward Liston, former president at the Community College of Rhode Island, and the academic vice president there, Dr. Robert Silvestri, Dr. William Truhart, my mentor as an ACE fellow at Bryant College, Dr. David Pierce for setting a model through his outstanding leadership at the American Association of Community Colleges and for taking the time to instruct me about the sometimes Byzantine world of higher education at one DuPont circle and the political labyrinths of Washington, D.C. Dr. Terry O'Banion, former head of the League for Innovation in the Community College, who personally provided me with a view of the cutting edge of our profession. President Martha Smith and all my colleagues in learning at Anne Arundel Community College, and of course the BCC Board of Trustees and all of the BCC family and the greater community who have provi provided me with a warm welcome and this marvelous opportunity. This institutional celebration presents an occasion to reflect, remember, the history of our great college. What better way than for me to recognize the outstanding leadership of my two distinguished predecessors, 
the late founding president, President Emeritus Jack Cudnell, and President Emerita Eileen Farley. Together, this lineage has brought Bristol Community College to great heights. I now stand on the firm foundation that they have laid, and the view is remarkable. From fact, from where I am standing, I think I can see forever. Thank you, Presidents Hudnell and Farley, and for Mrs. Hudnell. <laughs> Celebrate. I think perhaps on a personal level, most of you are saying enough is enough, and I agree. But rather than slipping into an exercise in solipsism, we gather for a noble purpose, to honor Bristol Community College and to celebrate learning. And what a wonderful institution to celebrate. All of us have heard from the various constituencies, and we all have a sense of their concerns, challenges, and most important, their great goodwill. Let's celebrate this institution. First, I'd like to ask all students currently enrolled at Bristol Community College to stand. All students, please stand. Stay up. Please stay standing. Please stay standing. One of the greatest joys for me in what has been a joy-filled initiation period at BCC is to meet and interact with our students. We shall continue to support you in your endeavors. Your success means our success. Your success lights brightly the future of this great region. Whenever I think about new beginnings, I reflect on the wondrous historical era of the re Renaissance. Some 500 years ago, Pico della Mirandola's oration captured the essence of the Renaissance. His words also captured the spirit of my wish for you. You, he wrote, who are confined by no limits, may fashion yourself in whatever form you shall prefer. I pledge you my unqualified support and that of the entire BCC community. BCC is a place where students come first. As you pursue your academic and personal goals with us, please be mindful of the lesson taught by Robert Hastings. Sooner or later, we must realize there is no station, no one place to arrive at once and for all. The true joy of life is the trip. Students, please remain standing while I ask the entire faculty, both full-time and adjunct, to stand. Faculty, you have heard me say many times that you are the most important part of this institution. We, the rest of us, support you. A college is only as good as its faculty. I re-emphasize that sentiment today as a rededication of my commitment to you and a promise to you of the support and affirmation for your glorious efforts by everyone else at the college. Your creativity informs your teaching. Your enthusiasm for learning infects your students. You teach and you inspire. As Wordsworth so eloquently described it, what we have loved, others will love, and we will teach them how. But I have also been impressed with your understanding of an even larger challenge. That is, BCC must not merely prepare citizens who can make informed choices, but rather inform citizens who can make ethical choices. As we pursue this heroic mission, let us always keep in mind the words of this Holocaust survivor. I saw gas chambers built by civil engineers, children poisoned by educated physicians, infants killed by trained nurses, women and babies shot and burned by high school and college graduates. I am suspicious of education. Help your students become human. These moving words describe our larger purpose at Bristol Community College. Now, with the students and faculty still standing, I now ask all classified to join them. Please stand, all classified. Our support staff, maintainers, groundskeepers, security officers, clerks, secretaries, administrative assistants. One of my professors at Georgetown, Carol Quigley, de uh, declared the chief immediate aim of life of each individual must be to help others to realize their potentialities. Dr. Quigley was describing the core of the community college philosophy. For many of you on our support staff, you represent that vital first contact for our students. Their brittle commitment to education, plagued by self-doubt, hesitancy, and uncertainty, is easily shattered in those critical first few moments on our campus. Your attitude and actions can make all the difference for them during these initial contacts. Moreover, you play premier roles in enhancing the smooth operation and efficiency of all BCC activities, and in providing an affirming learning environment. Please be assured of my commitment and support to you. 
In your work, recall the words of Immanuel Kant, that other persons must never be treated as means, but must always be treated as ends in themselves. <coughs> You have a significant contribution to make in ensuring that we are an institution where students like to be. Now, while this group is standing, would all professionals, unit and non-unit, administrators all stand, please? In your hands lies the management of BCC affairs. You also bear much responsibility for shaping a BCC environment that is both learner-centered and learning-centered, one that affirms our highest priority of student success. Your decisions carry great impact. You have my pledge of commitment and support. As you carry out your responsibilities, please recall the sentiment of Walter Lippmann that the springs of greatness lie finally in the conviction to serve the truth and not opinion, to do what is right, whether or not you are sure to succeed. This is the way of greatness. Please remain standing. Would the members of the Board of Trustees now please rise? One of the reasons higher education in this country is the best in the world is the presence of volunteer boards who agree to guide their institutions on matters of policy and direction. To you falls the overall responsibility for the general welfare of this great institution. I pledge to you not only my commitment and support, but also my undying loyalty. As you address these heroic challenges, draw sustenance from these words of Langston Hughes. Hold fast to dreams, for if dreams die, life is a broken winged bird cannot fly. Ladies and gentlemen, you see before you a precious resource for BCC, our human capital. This is an outstanding collection of individuals who perform extraordinary feats in the pursuit of knowledge at Bristol Community College. They form the core of BCC as colleagues in learning. There is a great harmony of interest among their individual and collective concerns. Alexander Pope wrote, all, but are, all are but parts of one stupendous whole. But at BCC, the whole is greater than the sum of its parts. Herman Melville undoubtedly prophesied about our BCC learning committee, community when he wrote, a thousand fibers connect us. Our actions run as causes, and they come back to us as effects. Please join me in honoring their accomplishments, their noble purpose, and their luminous future. community reflective of the highest levels of professionalism, expertise, cooperation, and commitment to learning. A strong sense of family impressed me from the first moment I stepped foot on this campus. It is a pleasure, indeed an honor, to be associated with such an outstanding campus family, our colleagues in learning. The Office of the Presidency in American Higher Education has attracted much attention. Did you know that the record for the longest term of service by a president is held by a Lifflet Knot at my alma mater? The legendary Knott presided at Union College from 1804 to 1866, a mind-boggling total of 62 years. I see some of the presidents and former presidents in the audience wincing. <laughs> and why is President Farley smiling? <laughs> One critic described the president in higher education as an autocrat, a dollar mark capitalist, summing trembling vassals of the realm watching for heresies and, without mercy, bringing vengeance on the unfaithful. But another observer harbored a more limited view in explaining that a president presides over a tropical jungle full of queer animals. Some run about seeking whom they devour. Others sit quietly in corners, shrinking from observation. About all the president can do is to stand on a height above it and squirt perfume on the assemble. To be sure, there is some element of truth in this, but in my brief indoctrination to the job thus far, I agree with Harvard President Charles Eliot, who in 1909, after only a mere 40 years in that position, exulted that the thrill of being a college leader, quote, has no equal in the world, unquote. I may not challenge President Knott's record, but I will be here as long as I am wanted and able to contribute, not as a perfume squirter, but as someone who uses this bully pulpit to speak out on the, ins on the issues and to champion the learning process. It is my firm belief that community colleges represent the most exciting dimension of higher education in this country. As one who has enjoyed associations with world-class institutions of learning, Union, Georgetown, the London School of Economics and Political Science, Cambridge, Oxford, 
Yale, Bryan, Temple. I must report to you that for me, community colleges and the community college philosophy and mission have no equal. Imagine, it is customary on these occasions to sketch out a vision for the future. Our third theme today, Imagine, offers a marvelous opportunity for presenting briefly my vision for Bristol Community College. Simply put, this institution will serve as a model for regional community colleges. The three pillars of our mission, teaching, professional development, and service, will be dedicated to that goal. Many building blocks buttress my vision. I shall briefly describe several of them, and in doing so, I, I shall aspire to the heights the cities laid out in the funeral oration of Pericles. The bravest are surely those who have the clearest vision of what is before them, glory and danger alike, and yet notwithstanding, go out to meet it. The first building block is a single-minded dedication to student success and student learning. Whatever the purpose of student comes to us, and we can help shape that purpose, we shall be prepared to provide the instructional and support services necessary for success. Student learning first will be our operational model. The second building block focuses on academic freedom. It is about the transformational power of ideas. The exchange of ideas and the pursuit of knowledge and the eternal verities are noble enterprises that must not be allowed to that must be allowed to flow freely across the campus unfettered. A third component centers on quality. Excellence is our goal, not just in instruction, but in everything we do, and we strive to improve ourselves continuously. Fourth is accountability. The hallmarks of any professional are self-policing and self-imposed rigorous standards. We shall set ambitious goals and report regularly on our progress towards attaining those goals. Our public support and public funding impose a public trust on BCC. We have an obligation to ensure the public investment. We must hold ourselves accountable in all of our activities as we justify that public trust. In practice, this is a relatively easy task because all we need to do is tell our story. We embrace this responsibility enthusiastically. Indeed, we should welcome public scrutiny in order to reassess our community and our very supportive legislators about the con reassure our community and our very supportive legislators about the conduct of our affairs. Those not yet familiar with Bristol Community College will be astonished at our feats and marvel at the return on investment and what we accomplish with relatively modest resources, and they haven't seen anything yet. A fifth building block is affordability. One of the cherished principles of the community college movement is accessibility, our beloved policy of the open door. But while we have been boasting over the years, our sticker prices have been on a troubling trend. For some time, I have been alarmed at the rate of cost increases that have plagued our colleagues at baccalaureate granting institutions. And I remain apprehensive about the influence of their increases on our community college costs. I pledge my best efforts to maintain affordable, accessible tuition and fees at Bristol Community College. The sixth and seventh building blocks are diversity and technology. These are combined here because I believe strongly that both should provide a general context for all BCC activities. We must reach out to attract a more diverse student body. It is the right thing to do, and it also coincides with the community college philosophy of working with underserved populations. For many people in these underserved groups, community colleges represent the last best hope for a better life through education. As part of our mission of service, we need to provide a welcoming, affirming environment for all students. This means in part ensuring that our profile of BCC employees across all divisions, units, position titles, and responsibilities must also reflect the rich diversity of our community. I have, I have seen how a diverse college staff can benefit students, for example, through role modeling, mentoring, and ease of communications. The use of technology can improve our efficiency in administrative offerings and the quality of our instructional offerings. This is no fad. Technology is here to stay. Indeed, we have an obligation to prepare our students to compete in a technological global environment. Of course, we must be prudent in our decisions regarding technology. It can give rise to insatiable demands upon our already strained resources. Moreover, professional development costs are inseparable from decisions about technology. I shall seek to develop new dimensions of alternative sources of funding to assuage these mushrooming demands. Well, I'm almost halfway through the list. Actually, for last, I have saved one of the most important building blocks. My vision for BCC incorporates a heavy emphasis on partnerships and the principle of regionalism and collaboration. 
Partnerships with both the public and private sectors will inform our mission mandates. Pre-K through 12, higher education, governmental agencies, the business world, economic developers, including workforce development and corporate training, all will be invited to participate in our partnership network. Limited budgets, strained resources, and escalating needs for services, in my opinion, make inevitable the creation of new partnerships and the strengthening of existing ones. But beyond these, on even a more general level, lies the need to collaborate on a regional basis. Our service area encompasses a broad region which extends from Attleboro to New Bedford. The needs and concerns across this service area are complex, yet in my travels I have been struck by the common interests that exist, but remain partially a disguised and unattended. Cooperation on all fronts across this region will bring about a transformation of unlimited potential. BCC is well positioned to play a key role in uniting heretofore desperate entities. Well, there is my brief summary of the major building blocks of my vision. It is, however, important to keep in mind that a vision must be commonly held and commonly supported by the entire community. Moreover, the clarity of the vision requires an introspective examination of your heart. Carl Jung reminds us, who looks outside dreams, who looks inside awakes. To be sure, there are several other building blocks. Positioning BCC as an integral part of, and not just in, the community. Planning strategically. Ensuring that we put our money where our mission is. Instilling our appreciation for lifelong learning. Strengthening a system of shared governance. And developing a spectrum of credit and non-credit instruction which accommodates formal credentialing as well as guarantees about specific skills, abilities, and competencies. But I have trespassed enough on your time. You know, I really don't mind it when people in the audience glance at their wristwatches, but it does send a clear signal to me when the board chair begins tapping his wristwatch and holding it up to his ear to see if it stopped altogether. <laughs> this is not the end of a long journey, but rather a new beginning. We remain united behind a glorious cause, the quest for knowledge, the search for truth. What more noble enterprise exists? Throughout my career, it has been my great good fortune to have my vocation merge with my avocation. As Robert Frost described it, where love and need are one and work is play. May you too enjoy such happy circumstances. My inaugural wish for you is that we join in collaboration and with single-minded purpose to ensure that Bristol Community College faces the future as a learner-centered, learning-centered institution committed to student success, and that we all act in, in concert as colleagues in learning. Thank you very much. My watch is broke, Jack, coincidentally, but I kept watching Sally, who kept going like this. <laughs> now that you've all so graciously taken your seats, I would have to ask you to stand. <clears throat> I'd like to introduce Rabbi William Kaufman of Fall River's Temple Bethel and a college adjunct professor of philosophy who will give the benediction. Our God and God of our fathers and mothers, we ask your blessing upon Dr. John J. Spraga, inaugurated today as president of Bristol Community College. Grant him, O oh Lord, the strength to implement his high ideals, such as colleagues in learning and student success. Vouchsafe unto him the fortitude to carry out his vision for Bristol Community College in terms of his concepts of remember, celebrate, and imagine. Remembering all that is good and beneficial, celebrating the accomplishments of Bristol Community College and its role as the jewel of the community, and imagining the dreams we have yet 
to fulfill. Give him, O oh God, the diligence to fulfill these dreams and to realize his vision for a greater Bristol Community College. We thank you, O oh God, for this day and for the leadership of Dr. John J. Sprague, as we all dedicate ourselves to the principle that education is not a mere means to life, education is life. Amen. Please be seated. At this time, I'd like to thank our two interpreters for the deaf, Sandra Ligren, an instructor in American Sign Language, and Aileen O'Neill. On behalf of the college, I invite you to join us in the Commonwealth College Center for a reception catered by our exceptional culinary arts department. Dr. Sprague will greet you there. I would ask that you please remain seated until the recessional is complete. Once the academic party has recessed, I declare this installation closed. On behalf of all my fellow colleagues in learning here at Bristol Community College, thank you all very, very much for joining us.